I am now reading romance books because of the dreadful fact that I am single and all I want is someone to ask me out and that won't happen but I don't want to pursue the active role in the relationship because that means that I am in charge and that's scary. I didn't like it. Hi friends, my name is Joel and welcome back to my booktube channel. If you've yet to check out my Ray Bera review, I think you should go check that out because I discuss how awesome Ray Bera by John Nifueco is and how it can be a good beginner YA fantasy, so go and check that out. And if you've yet to follow my Twitter nor my bookstagram, I think you should go check those out as well because I post some extra bookish content on there too. For today's video, I am going to be reading romance novels. Now, I have never really delved into romance before, and although there are like romance subplots within books, I've never really read a book for the romance itself, and so I am really excited to be delving into it. I took a few of your suggestions a couple of weeks ago, and also on Twitter and Instagram, and then I asked a few of my fellow romance booktubers and bloggers what romances they thought were really good, and so I have a few of the books here, and then once I read these, I'll see if I want to continue with the romance genre. And so it's gonna be quite a three-day-ish reading vlog, I think. Although my TBR, it's not really a TBR, it's just a bunch of books that I have bought to read for romance. If I get through all of them, I'll be shocked. I will be shooketh, but I definitely think I'm gonna get through at least a half of these, a few of these. I do still have three books on the way. Um, but before I get into that, grab your beverage of choice, sit down, relax, and enjoy. So, the first two books that are on the list of romance books to read is Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and Take a Hint, Danny Brown, both by Talia Hibbert. Now, I didn't actually realise that Talia Hibbert was British until I looked on her Twitter profile because, I don't know, I kind of feel like publishing is very, um, like, centric in America, and so I didn't, I just assumed that Talia Hibbert was American. I was wrong. I was very wrong. Talia Hibbert is British, and so supporting Black British authors, as you should, these two are definitely going to be books that I'm going to be reading first. I am just really excited to be getting into them. Get a Life, Chloe Brown follows Chloe, who after almost dying, decides to create a kind of bucket list of things that she wants to do. To complete one of the things, which is to do something bad, she enlists the help of Red, and the romance ensues from there. And then in Take a Hint, Danny Brown, Danny basically gets saved by Zaf, who is like her building security guard. And after they go viral on social media, they decide to start fake dating. And Danny, being the academic that she is, she's quite cynical towards like romantic attachments, but Zaf is like a huge romantic. And so I think the juxtaposition between their two personalities is definitely going to like hit off the romance really well. I think I'm more excited to read Danny Brown than Chloe Brown, just because I've heard more good things about Danny Brown, but I'm equally as excited to see what Chloe Brown has to offer. And then we have one that was kind of recommended to me straight away as soon as I asked for romance books on Twitter. I think this is the one that a lot of people wanted to see me read for like the longest time. And that is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. This one stars um, America's first son and also the Prince of Wales. And me being Welsh, I'm kind of like, yes, I'm gonna be reading this straight away. I'm really excited to be getting into this one. I've heard a lot of good things about Case McQuinston's writing and how good the romance is. And so this is one that I'm definitely intrigued by and one that I'm definitely excited to be getting into. This one basically follows Alex, who is the first son of the United States. And basically he has beef with Henry, who is the Prince of Wales. And so they start this kind of Instagram friendship, but then it starts to get into something deeper when people start interpreting it differently. I've definitely heard a lot of good things and I can't wait to see what Alex and Henry have to offer. And then I wanted to kind of like spice it up a little and decide to introduce some graphic novels into it. And so volumes two and three are on the way, but I have Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This one I have heard non-stop things about. I'm definitely excited to get into it and see what happens. I decided to go into this one blind, because I don't really want to know what it's about until I actually start reading it. And so all I know is boy meets boy, boys become friends, boys fall in love. And that is all I want to know because that is basically 
all I need to know. But I'm really excited to be getting into Heart Stopper. The art style just looks super gorgeous. And then we also have a sapphic, a sapphic romance, which is Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. This one follows Millie, who after seeing her kind of best friend sort of girlfriend kissing someone else, she decides to run away to a boarding school, but it turns out her roommate Flora is actually the Princess of Scotland. And so the both of them kind of don't like each other at first, but then it delves into something deeper, kind of that best friend sort of girlfriend relationship. And I'm just really excited to be reading another sapphic romance. And I know that if I like this one, I might delve into The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics afterwards. So I'm definitely excited to see what this book has to offer. And plus it's like 200 and something pages. And then the final books that I have physically are The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test by Han Huang. Both of these books have been highly requested to me to read and I'm just super excited to be getting into them. Um, I just think the covers look really gorgeous and I've heard nothing but good praise for Han Huang's writing. Roxanne Gay and Taylor Jenkins Reid have also blurred both of these. Roxanne Gay is definitely a writer that I look up to. I've yet to read anything by Taylor Jenkins Reid, but we are reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo in September. So given how much hype is surrounding her, I am going to say that maybe her blurb is trustworthy. Who knows? We'll see once I read The Bride Test. The Kiss Quotient follows Stella, who, because she has Asperger's, doesn't believe she really knows how to talk to men properly. And so she decides to hire a male escort in order to teach her how to talk to men and be with a man. And basically that is where the romance starts. And the more that male escort called Michael spends with Stella, the more that he kind of doesn't want to leave her and the more that he doesn't really want to be paid to spend time with her anymore. And so this is very exciting and very cool. And I cannot wait to be getting into this one. And then the bride has follows Kai Deep who has autism. And so he doesn't really think that he can form um, proper attachments to people. And so his mother decides to get him a bride from Vietnam. And so Esme Tran is the bride that has come from Vietnam to America in order to fall in love with Kai and seduce him. And so when the time approaches and the clock is running out, Esme kind of wants to seduce Kai so that she can stay in America and get a better life for herself. And it's all about whether Kai actually does fall in love with her or not. But I am so excited to be delving into all of these romance books. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the three books on the way, which is 10. 10 books in three days. Um, I definitely don't think I'm gonna be able to get through all of them within the next three days, but at least I now have a kind of little library of romance books for me to delve into when I need to. I also wanna try and get through the book that I've ordered today, which is The Hating Game, because Noelle has been nonstop about that book. And I'm just like, okay, I'll order it and I'll read it and I will shout at you once I've read it. Yeah, I think this is just gonna be a really cool reading vlog and hopefully we'll have a fun time. But yeah, I think my main worry with all these reading all of these romance books is that I'm gonna be reminded of how single I am and my thirst for a relationship might grow. But I mean, I've been watching Korean drama, like romantic Korean dramas for years. And so I think I've been properly trained and conditioned in romantic yearning from these books and how to deal with it. So we'll see how that goes. I am just really excited to see what happens during this vlog and I hope you're excited as well. I don't think there's anything else I need to say. So let's get started. Hello and happy Sunday everyone. So last night I managed to finish A Get A Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert and just wow. I really, really, really love this. I just, there were so many things I liked about it. Like I think the one thing that stood out really strongly to me with Talia Hibbert's writing was how she was really able to ground her characters very quickly and how she was able to automatically get me to automatically feel and relate to these characters. Like, 
the mentions of like uh, Chloe playing The Sims or like Lara Croft. Like I could really ground Chloe's character right away. And the fact that this novel is also set in England was just really nice because a lot of the stuff that Chloe and Red was saying, I personally like related to and like I got straight away. Although the one bad thing is that Red likes PG tips. Like, I'm sorry, I'm a massive Tetley fan. Um. I don't really like the taste of PG tips, so I'm sorry Red, you did lose a few points there for me. I think that just it was really nice to see the character development throughout the novel, and also Chloe and Red going through their own personal struggles, Chloe going through the fact that she doesn't really think her life amounts to much, and trying to make her life more exciting, and Red going through the personal trauma of his ex, and the emotional abuse that he had received from her, and sometimes also physically. And I think that was just done superbly well, like normalizing the fact that men's mental health sucks and that the male suicide rate is higher than women's and that Red actually tries to improve on that throughout this novel and I commend Talia Hibbert for highlighting that and it's amazing. I also love the fact that Chloe's chronic illness wasn't shied away from in this story, like she has fibromyalgia among a multitude of different Ill chronic illnesses and it becomes an integral part of the story, like it's a part of who Chloe is and she talks about it very honestly and very openly about how much pain she's in and I just loved that. I loved how real this book was. There was also a conflict within the third act that didn't really make much sense to me because we were literally about 40 pages from finishing and we immediately had like one last conflict in the text which D d it didn't make sense to me because it basically just rehashed a lot of the things that our characters had already learned throughout the novel and I felt like it was just an excuse to do this like cute thing right at the end. But I did like how it was resolved but I just feel like that conflict wasn't necessary. The resolution was really cute and I really did like it and I did love the growth of Chloe and Red's relationship. I felt that it was very natural and it happened quite quickly. And yeah, I ended up giving this four stars out of five. Um, This would have been a five out of five had the conflict at the end really not like ruined a little bit of the book for me. I still really highly recommend this if you're looking to get into romance for the first time because it's definitely one that I love. I also got my other books last night, which I will show you now. So last night I got volumes two and three of the Heartstopper comic by Alice Oseman. And I also got The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. But today we are doing a kind of impromptu 24 hour readathon. And I think I'll be hosting some reading sprints on Twitter later, which should be exciting. I think I'll do it for like two hours. And yeah, I think I'm going to read Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I'm gonna try and get through the three volumes of Heartstopper and also read Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. I definitely think my growth as a person has now led to a growth in my reading diversity, which is really exciting because now I'm exploring different genres and I'm hoping to do like something like this every month where I explore a different genre. Like I think in September I might do classics maybe, maybe I'll do classics purely because of university. But October we're doing thrillers and horrors. Maybe November I do, I don't know. We'll, we'll do something fun in November. Maybe we'll do like more fantasy stuff and I do like a whole fantasy reading vlog, I don't know. But I definitely think like themed reading vlogs like surrounding genres is something I definitely want to do more of. So another thing that I wanted to discuss today was romance book bloggers and romance booktubers because there are definitely some amazing content creators on here. And given some of the events that have happened uh, on Twitter today, um, I definitely think it's important that we celebrate romance book bloggers and romance booktubers and everything that they do. And so at the end of the video, obviously I'll be giving my shout out of fates, but I want to let you know now that I will have some romance booktubers, bloggers, and some bookstagrammers who feature romance books in the description down below so that you can go check them all out. They do so much for this community and I definitely think that you should go and support them, subscribe to them, and check out their content because they are all equally amazing and wonderful people. They are definitely smaller creators on this platform and I think that we do need to uplift more creators of colour and also more creators that dedicate their time and energy for no gain whatsoever and I just think it's amazing what they do. So yeah, 
definitely go check them out. Chloe Brown was amazing. And I've just heard that Danny Brown just takes it even better. And then I know that Talia Hibbert has a third book with Eve coming out soon, I think in 2021. So I will be equally as excited for that. Maybe I might try and see if I can get an arc for it because who knows, I could become a romance booktuber after this. <laughs> Actually, no, I think I'm going to be staying grounded in fantasy. But I do think I kind of want to start reading romances more often. And I think I do want to incorporate at least a romance into my TBRs a month. But yeah, I'm going to get to reading and I will check up with you soon. <laughs> Hi friends, so I'm hosting reading sprints on Twitter at the moment and one of the sprints is actually going on at the moment but I paused because oh my god I started crying because of Danny Brown. Um, basically I really Just the a representation of male mental health in this story is amazing. And Talia Hibbert's writing just does it so well. And oh, because basically, it's not a spoiler, Zaf is having a panic attack. And the way that Danny handles it is just amazing. And I don't know, I, I think it, I think I just felt touched. I have anxiety and so I know exactly how it feels and I just think that the way that Danny responded is just something that like I have always wanted. I don't know, I just started reading it and then I, I started crying. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, but I'm about halfway through the novel now um, and I will probably finish it and then I think I'm going to take a bit of a break and then at midnight I'm going to delve into Heartstopper and I don't know how long that'll take me, but I will catch up with you once I finish Danny Brown. So far, it's just really amazing and I love it. It improves a lot on Chloe Brown and delivers a stronger narrative. Again, we are immediately seeing what type of people Danny and Zephyr. Eve still remains my favorite Brown sibling. Like she is just iconic. She reminds me a lot of Margot from To All The Boys. I cannot wait for her book when it releases. I am now gonna recover my tears um, and continue reading. Who knows, I might be a mess after this, but wow, I just, Wow. So I just finished Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert and wow, it is literally so amazing and the way that it was wrapped up was really beautiful and I definitely think the third act conflict was much better than uh, Get A Life Chloe Brown and I think that you can really see the developments of Talia Hibbert's writing in this novel as well like she took what she had written in Chloe Brown and basically made it a hundred times better in Danny Brown and I loved it so much. Five stars, definitely five stars like Zaf is my dream man, I guess. Like he is just amazing and wonderful and wow. And Danny is this incredible human who basically kind of is the female version of me, I believe. The way that she acts and her worries and her anxieties mirror my own and it's really creepy and like her tastes also mirror my own, which I'm just like, is this me? maybe. I just really loved the writing and the character development in this, like in Chloe Brown it was really strong. I think Talia Hibbert's writing 
is where it excels in that aspect, like in Chloe Brown. Her character creation and her character voices are just stellar and amazing and wow and she really excels at telling her character's stories and I definitely would recommend you read Chloe Brown before reading Danny Brown just so that you get the story of the sisters um, a lot more and you get that kind of background knowledge to Chloe and Red who do appear in this book. I'm basically going to be getting into the Heartstopper graphic novels. Um, I'm really excited and I just cannot wait to see like what it's all about. Again, like I mentioned before, I'm going into this blind. I think their names are Nick and Charlie. So I'm really excited to see what happens. As you can see, it gets longer per volume. So that's also exciting to see. Talia Hibbert gets me as a human and it's really weird how she does that in, in her writing. But like, I've never felt so seen. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna start reading Heartstopper and then see where that takes me. And then if I do have time, I think I'm gonna get into Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins, purely because it's literally 200-ish pages. But for now, I'm gonna get changed and then I'll start reading Heartstopper. I'm really excited. I am definitely super excited to be reading Heartstopper because my friend Owen, has been non-stop at me to read Heartstopper for the longest time and I'm gonna be doing it. So Owen, this is for you. Also, um, you may have noticed I haven't been wearing my sword earring lately until now. That is because I thought I had lost it. <laughs> Ever since I took my photo for the Cinderella is Dead uh, book tour for Pride book tours, I could not find my sword earring whatsoever and so I was very panicked and, but I found it. And it was underneath um, something on my desk, but yes. I will catch up with you all once I have uh, read a bit more of Heartstopper. So, yeah. Good morning friends! So it is Monday and I wanted to wrap up quickly some of the books that I read last night and then we'll get into what we're going to be reading today. But before then, I had a very cute package today. Library Lights had sent me one of their beautiful candles. It is of fantasy and oh, it just smells amazing and I cannot wait to burn this and just like soak in the atmosphere whilst I'm digging into maybe witches steeped in gold when I start reading that this week and I'm just really excited because I'm going to be working with them for a video that should be going live soon. It's gonna be bisexual chaos I feel like. It's just gonna be chaotic and I'm gonna love it. Plus this t-shirt was one that I had bought yesterday and I just think that it just looks really nice. On today's agenda we're going to be reviewing the Heartstopper volumes one, two, three, and it's amazing. I needed something as soft and as beautifully drawn and illustrated as Heartstopper. It's just such a nice light read and I do know we're about to delve into some heavier topics as we've already done in volumes one to three and I really like how Alice Oseman is able to balance the light-hearted softness of Nick and Charlie and counterbalancing that with the discussions of homophobia and mental illness and now we're about to touch into eating disorders as well and I just think Alice Oseman is really able to delve into these topics very well and we We'll also see a good exploration and depiction of someone finding out they're bisexual which was really reminiscent of how I found out I was bi so I really liked that um, display as well and it's just really great and these characters are fleshed out and the more that we see them the more we learn about them and I just think the entire dynamic between Nick and Charlie is amazing. I also stand Tara and Darcy like their relationship just cracks me up. I love them both so much and I just think that that it's really a nice um, light-hearted graphic novel series if you did want to get into graphic novels and it's actually also available for free on Tapas. Uh, Tapas is basically a place where people go to read webtoons and Heartstopper is originally a webtoon before it did become a printed graphic novel and I do know that a new chapter has been published on Tapas so I will definitely be reading that 
soon. So I will leave the tapas link for Heartstopper in the description if you did want to go and do that. And there are definitely a lot of great webtoons on tapas as well. So I definitely recommend going checking that out as well. But then after Heartstopper, I got into Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. I, mm, mm, mm. I didn't like it. I had a lot of high hopes for this novel and I had a lot of like high hopes for this sapphic romance. I was really disappointed and I'm really sad about that because I, I just wanted to like love this so much and I heard so many good things about it from people and I... No. I just felt like the plot was underdeveloped, the characters were underdeveloped, I felt like the world was un- there was just a lot of underdevelopment in this novel. I also felt like there was a strong lack of research into Scotland and also the British wider culture because Flora, uh, the Scottish princess in one um, part, they go to a Scottish pub and basically a guy comes up to uh, our main character Millie and starts chatting her up and then she turns around and calls him a sheep shagger. Sheep shaggers are, is an insult directed to Welsh people, not Scottish people. So I, and I just felt like Millie really fell flat. Like she was interested in geology, but we only really see that at like certain points in the novel when it's convenient and when it like tries to build the relationship between Millie and Flora which doesn't really work out so well and I just felt like Millie was really two-dimensional and just didn't flesh out enough and she didn't really learn anything throughout the novel. It kind of reminded me of like Korean dramas where the girl or the guy falls in love with the chebol air. They're suddenly like oh no I cannot be in love with them. I'm only a poor commoner girl or guy and they are a rich chebol and I'm just like it's it's not it's not enough it's not enough and i just felt like this novel could have done with at least a hundred more pages to flesh out the world and the characters and just get some better conflict because there's really no conflict in this story apart from millie fluffing around about flora um being a princess and it's, it's just not really that great like the cover is gorgeous i will admit that but like apart from that there's not really much else to it and I was really sad. And I just think that um, the pacing was also really off as well. Like this is a 274 page book and there's 39 chapters. Chapters one to three basically were a chapter one to me. And it, it just, it didn't spell well. It didn't spell well from the get go. And I, I'm just really sad that I didn't like this book. Although if you are a fan of like quick and easy, sapphic reads that you don't really have to be too invested in and it's just something that you want to maybe listen to as an audiobook i guess this one could be for you because it's something that's just light and airy and it literally just um is quite a quick read as well and i just think that it's not for me purely because i am personally a fan of characters that are three-dimensional well-developed have their own personal conflicts and the world building is also stellar so it is able to build a kind of society around the character in a contemporary and I just didn't get that from this. I also think that the plot needs to be clearly defined. There was really nothing that drove Millie whatsoever apart from the fact that she went to Scotland to get away from Jude. I gave volume one of Heartstopper four stars I liked it um, but I felt like I wanted a little bit more from this but it vastly improved in volumes two and three, which I gave both five stars because I just think it did a lot more for me and I really liked it. And then as previously discussed, I gave Her Royal Highness one star. Yeah, I almost DNF'd it. I almost DNF'd it at, I think it was like the last 40 pages because for some reason we had another like conflict right at the end of the book with um, Millie was like, oh no, I can't be with you because you're a princess. Um, and I'm just a simple Texan girl and I was, mm. and then at the end, they, they, there was just not enough to the ending. It just cut off at a really awkward time and it just, yeah. On today's agenda, the first book that I'm going to be reading is Red Bull. 
So on today's agenda, the first book that I'm going to be reading is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. This one I think has been the most highly requested book that I read for this romance reading vlog, along with Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And so I'm really excited to be getting into this. Um, I'm hoping that it's not as badly researched as Her Royal Highness is and that it does represent British culture quite well. We'll see. I think I'm going to be page tabbing this one because I didn't page tab Heartstopper or Her Royal Highness purely because I I think I think after the first chapter I was just like I don't think I will. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna really enjoy this book and I wonder like what's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, it's just been quite a nice chill reading vlog so far, I think. And I definitely think that um, romance has definitely opened up a lot for me and definitely like given me a lot to think about in terms of what books I read going forward. And like, I think it's definitely made me value romance a lot more in books. And I definitely think that it's something that I do want to look at in the future. Um, although I also kind of want to do a reading vlog of like purely friendship books as well and books that don't include romance purely because I'm a big fan of romance novels, yes. Um, but I also want to highlight the fact that romance isn't always necessary in books and romance isn't always the prime objective in books. I am going to get into Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston and I guess I'll check in in a little bit. So yeah, see you soon. So I finished Red, White and Royal Blue by Case McQuinston and oh my gosh, this story is just so cute and it basically delivered everything to me that Her Royal Highness could not. It basically has such a nice plot, like there's such a nice subplot to the romance and like it's all underlying this like election and Henry's kind of relationship with the monarchy and I just think it was really nice how it was displayed. I also think that Henry and Alex's relationship took a gradual growth as opposed to suddenly turning straight away and I just think that it was definitely written really well and I think that Alex's experiences as a Mexican in America is definitely something that is highlighted in this novel. The, just the entire novel is amazing and Casey McQuinston clearly did her research on Britain and like the stuff that goes on in Britain because we have mentions of actual British newspapers this morning which is a British talk show and I think that it just shows a lot of the care that she took in order to display this kind of alternative history story and I just love it so much and it was really it hit me in the feels a lot and I think that it was just beautifully written and I cannot wait to see what else Casey McQuinston writes. I think that if you definitely didn't like Her Royal Highness or like if you did like it a little bit you'll definitely love her, um, Red, White and Royal Blue because it delivers a lot more than what Her Royal Highness couldn't. I just think that the romance was really cute as well and just the way that they would send each other like quotes from like historically written letters was just so adorable and I just think this novel basically reminded me of the fact that like I am a single mess and I don't know the romance was just so cute and it was something that I really want and it's just so beautiful and oh I just I would love Henry or Alex to be my boyfriend um but no I ended up giving this five stars because it was just such a nice light read that definitely did touch upon some heavier topics at times and it definitely didn't shy away from touching upon those topics it was something that was kind of needed to be discussed and I really loved it I also love how it took down the monarchy a little talking about like its previous past of colonization I also thought that the subplot 
with the election and stuff was handled really well and provided a nice balance from the growth of the relationship. The characters were very fully fleshed out. I felt like each character had with their own individual and that they all had their own goals and desires and dreams. Um, it's just amazing. I'm a big fan of great character development and Casey McQuinston did that amazingly well and so I cannot wait to check out One Last Stop which comes out soon and is her next novel and I just think it's gonna be amazing as well. I loved it, I really loved it and now I also want the book of the month edition of this so that I have a hardcover copy um but apart from that it's great, it's beautiful. Like I need to start making a list of all like the special, like not special editions but kind of like editions of books that I need to get and so definitely need to get book of the month don't know how I'll get it, but we'll get it somehow. But yeah, it's just really beautiful. And I think that brings me to the end of this reading vlog, which is a bit sad because I really wanted to read more romance, but like, I can always do that later on. Um, but no, we managed to read seven books this time. Look at all of these gorgeous books that we were able to read. Like, I am just super happy with how much we read. And it was definitely a really nice first foray into romance novels and like wrote the romance genre itself. And I think that it definitely showed a lot of potential in my future like reading and like trying to incorporate more romance into my books. I just, I, yeah, I just loved it. I really love romance. And like, I think my favorite romance author is definitely Talia Hibbert. I think that she just writes amazingly well and lovely and beautiful, great character work, great character writing. And just, she made me cry, okay? Authors that can make me cry automatically shoot to the top of my list. So Talia Hibbert, amazing. Then we have Alice Oseman with Heartstopper, quite a cute fluffy read. Um, I would definitely recommend checking out the webcomic if you wanted to like read it first before buying any physical copies. Um, again, I'll have the tapas link in the description. It's just really nice, light and fluffy. It also does delve on some deeper topics such as eating disorders, um, depression and anxiety and also homophobia. So I definitely think it does it in a way that's like quite light and fluffy but can also delve. It has a nice balance between like the hard and the soft and I just really love that. I really like that. And then we have Red Bright and Royal Blue, which was amazing. I loved it. And yes, it just delivered a lot to me that I was expecting from another book. But regardless, it was gorgeous and amazing. And I loved it. And wow. There were also three books that I didn't get to read. The Hating Game, The Quiz Quotient and The Bride Test. And also uh, Princess in Theory, because I forgot about that one. But I definitely want to read these at some point and get to them at some point. Um, probably before the end of the month, because I'm kind of on my little romance kick at the moment. But I definitely think that it just will be worth the read. And Noelle definitely wants me to get to the hating game. So I should do that soon so I can start screaming at her about the hating game. I don't know, it kind of opened my eyes a lot to romance as a whole and the romance genre itself. And like, it definitely dismantled a lot of my preconceived notions about romance. And I think it's a lot of unlearning that I had to do about romance, about how like, I kind of just didn't expect it to affect me this way. Like I thought I wasn't really one for romance novels. I've kind of turned into Zaf from Take a Hint Danny Brown where I'm just like reading romance to get over the depressing fact that I'm single and that um, it just gives me that light that I need in my life because of depression. And so, you know, I it's beautiful, it's great. Zaf is basically the character that I relate to the most out of all of the, these books. But at the same time, I think like it kind of solidifies what I want in a person and what I want to see in a potential pers like person. Um, and I think that it's just really nice to kind of solidify that through reading romance novels. I mean, I've watched a lot of romantic Korean dramas for the longest time, but I think now that I'm starting to like incorporate like the reading into it, I think that it definitely kind of gives me a lot of ideas about kind of like how romantic I want my relationships to be. After this, I will be reading Which is Steeped in Gold by Sian and Smart, which is my most anticipated read for 2021. And Epic Reads kindly sent me an e advanced readers copy. I also want a physical advanced readers copy, but we'll work on that, we'll work on that. Um, and also I'm going to be reading The House in the Cerulean Sea afterwards. Both are quite nice fantasy books that I've been really wanting to get into this month. And so I'm just super excited to be getting into them. Um, and yeah, and then I think afterwards I'll be getting into the Kiss Quotient, Bride Test and the Hating Game, maybe to like end off the month. 
but I just think it's gonna be really nice and really exciting and I'm also gonna try and catch up on the next chapter of Heartstopper so that I am all caught up and ready to go. Thank you so much for watching this romance reading vlog. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider clicking that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. This week's shout out of fates goes out to two romance booktubers specifically. The first one goes out to Fadwa from Word Wonders, who is amazing. I've talked about her a lot in my booktube newbie tag. Fadwa basically completes my life. She is an outstanding person, an outstanding human, and she just does everything that she can for the romance genre, and she just is amazing. I love her and you should definitely go check her out. She recently reached 5,000 subscribers on her channel and she really needs more. Like, she's amazing. I love her content. If you ever need good romance recommendations, Fadwa is the one to go to because she just tells you straight and she is amazing and I love her. And then the second booktuber that I'm shouting out is Syl from The Book Voyages. Syl and I have been like friends on Twitter for I don't even know how long, but like Syl also is another one who talks a lot about romance and Syl has given me a lot of romance recommendations as well, who is, and she's just amazing and wonderful and I, lo I love her too. And it's just really nice to kind of have these friends who read different genres and are able to give you recommendations and then you're like, I kind of want to start reading this genre and they're like, okay, I've got you, here's a list. I mean, Mina did the exact same for me. And if you've not checked out Mina, go check out Mina as well. So Mina, Syl and Fadwa, three booktubers you should definitely go check out. I'll also have some romance book bloggers and potentially bookstagrammers if I can find any in the description down below. If you wanna find me on any other social media platforms, you can find me on all the social media links I have in the description. And if you wanna support me any further, I have my coffee and my Amazon wishlist in the description, which you can use to donate any books or many which will go towards uh, improving the channel and making it even better. Um, I guess until the next video, which I believe will be my writing vlog, which you should definitely go watch because I have a lot planned and it's just gonna be really exciting. But yes, until the next video, bye friends.